Alright, here's a video showing how to bootload the firmware on the Revolt controller. Uh, once you have the original software programmed onto the chip, this is possible. Um, the original software, which is usually loaded as the unified file, which you'll see in a minute, uh, contains the bootloader and the firmware for the controller. Um, so that way you can use the bootloader afterwards, but the first time you have to use the ISP connector um, to, to program the chip. So to start, um, this is my uh, Revision 2C Revolt board that I use for development. It is populated with an AT Mega 8, a uh, little older, but uh, still works great for testing. And then my USB serial link here, because my laptop doesn't have serial on it. Um, so what we're going to do, the link is connected to the computer. And uh, we'll go and uh, fire up, uh, we're going to need to fire up RTD Explorer. And uh, I've got to launch my virtual machine here, so this will take a second. I do everything out of virtual machines on my Mac, so it's uh, just to prove that it's pretty flexible and work great over the USB adapter. So while that's firing up, I can tell you about uh, where to get the firmware files. So if you launch a web browser, you can uh, head over to my website, which is Adam Brunette dot com forward slash firmware all right and this is a whole repository of all the firmwares um, that were stable for the controller starting with version 0 0.1 uh, well 0 0.10 um, all the way up to the latest um, pretty much, which is uh, 1.11b. So you have the firmware, f the folder right here, and then you have the zip file if you want to download the whole project and everything. But you can check it out. And uh, it's got all the files in there. And then uh, the readme file there, the PDF, I'll open that up real quick has all of the uh, commands and parameters of the controller a little description on what they do and uh, give you a better idea how to set them okay and then what we'll be looking at for form firmware files is depending on which chip you have the Mega 168 or the Mega 8 you can see the two folders here Mega 168 and the Mega 8 so I would go into the Mega 8 folder and then it loads all of the firmware files available for that uh, that chip will get the um, 16 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz outputs and then these are the unified files if you're loading with ISP you can use those for the first time and it'll load you the firmware and the bootloader all in one shot if you're just upgrading you're going to want the non-unified versions um, and then something a little different here if you go to the one using a 168 with this version, you'll see you have CRC or no CRC, uh, which is a checksum just to uh, that the controller will perform after it's loaded to uh, make sure everything loaded properly. So I'm gonna head over back over to my virtual machine here, and we'll get started. So what we're gonna do is if you're using a uh, USB serial adapter or if you don't know what your serial port is, I'm going to start by showing you how to find your serial port. So you're going to want to right click on my computer and go to properties. And then uh, still a little bit slow because it's still starting up. I should have logged in while I was showing you the firmware stuff. So head over to the hardware tab, 
device manager. Once device manager is open, you can go to the ports section, expand that. Oop, I'm sorry, I forgot to connect my USB serial adapter to my virtual machine. Obviously you won't have to do that if you're using a a non-virtual computer. So there's my USB serial port, COM17, popped right up there. So now we know that's COM17, we go ahead and launch RTD Explorer. You can also get that at my website, www.evvet.com. It's e v v e t t e dot com. Well, I can show you that real quick. Oh, there it is. And then once you get here, you can go to the RTD Explorer section and you can use the downloads right here to download the latest version of RTD Explorer and install that. Alright, so go back. So RTD Explorer is running now. Uh, this is the latest version currently. We are working on a new one. This is uh, version 3.1.45. And so what you're going to do is go to communication, com port. If your port's not listed in these first four, you can, if it is, you can just select one, and then it'll be checked for you. But otherwise, hit other, like I'm going to do. And then you have your, it asks you to enter your port number. I'll enter 17. And you're going to want to use the mouse for all the stuff in here. Don't use the enter key, because it'll give you a little error in the command box over there. Not a big deal, but gets kind of annoying. So hit OK, accepts the port number. And then communication and connect. And because this is serial, the controller does not have to be on when you connect. So you can see the controller's off right now. So we're gonna power it up. There it's running. And you can see on the screen here, the controller says it's Cougar OS controller firmware version 1.6. So you know it's up and running. So if you got your doubts, you can put your mouse in the uh, in the enter box right here, where you can enter the commands. Hit enter, and it'll show you. All right. So the next step is going to be. Uh, you might want to write down your configuration if you've already set some. Which, if you type config in the box, there it is. Hit enter. You'll get the full configuration for your controller. Um, some versions preserve the, f the configuration through firmware upgrades. Some do not. Uh, ones that have major changes do not preserve them. They revert to the defaults. So... We will upgrading from 1.6 here to 1.11b that will not preserve it, so we'd have to write these down. Alright, so the next step is to come up here to the bootloader tab. And you're going to want to, uh, your options, they're predefined in software. Uh, this box never got removed, so that's not necessary. You're going to want to uh, select your firmware right here. So I've already downloaded this, um, but you're going to download it from the website there. So I'm going to choose the Coog no CRC 16 khex which I, I just know because I downloaded just a few minutes ago. This is version 1.11b, um, and it's the 16K version, because it says it right there. So hit open on that. And then the next step, you go back to bootloader and select load firmware. So you get a little message, say are you sure you want to do this? Hit yes. It initiates a restart command to the controller and then it starts flashing the firmware. So you can watch it go here, a little readout in the box, and then it's going to verify it, make sure everything transferred okay. When it's done, you'll get a message 
it right there. Verify OK completed. And then these RTD period settings are the controller starting back up, RTD Explorer reinitiating the data stream, the real time data stream, and uh, the controller's good to go. You can see because uh, I don't have any uh, throttle or current sensor attached, we got two faults there throttle fault and fever fault. We had temperature sensor attached, it was showing us a green line across the middle of the screen here, but that's not attached either. And then uh, you can see down here we got a yellow light blinking because we have those faults active. So you can uh, you can do that as many times as you want. Um, it's pretty much impossible to screw up the controller by loading a bad firmware. So if I just do this again, this has only been tested a few times, so I hope it works for me. Uh, hit yes. Let's see that time it didn't initiate the restart. So let's try it again. Again, use the mouse, not the enter key. Oh, and the port. A couple of little flukes here. Oh, ah, that's what it is. When it has trouble, you'll have to reconnect. And sometimes it's going to be a pain. <laughs> so if it crashes like that, you're going to open up your task manager. You're going to look for a thing called AVR boot. That one right there. You're going to want to kill that process. Yes. Alright, so now that that process is dead, we should be able to connect back to the controller. There it is, we just saw our data refresh. Now, bootloader, load firmware, with the mouse, no enter key. Yes, there it is. Alright, now I'm going to shut it off. Alright, it died in the middle. So if I turn it back on, you can see it failed. It didn't get it all in there but it's still running. So it did get something in there, but it might not be complete. So we just load the firmware again. It's gonna start over, load back up. So it's pretty stable. Um, I've had it where the controller would not respond at all to anything serial. Um, just run the bootloader again, and it would come right back to life. So there we go, we're running version 1.11b, it's all up to date, it's that simple. Alright, I hope you guys enjoy this.